Thank you, Councillor Wells. Uh, now, uh, we're going to take questions now. I didn't mention before, sorry. If uh, I'm assuming most people here live in Douglas, but if you don't live in Douglas, you are entitled to ask a question, but I would like you to wait until the people from Douglas have had all their questions asked. Uh, if you don't live, I don't know whether anybody here doesn't live in Douglas in the area. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I'm now uh, going to throw the uh, meeting open for questions. A gentleman here, please, on in the grey shirt. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh, I you. Would you like the microphone, sir? No, I don't, I don't need a microphone, I don't think. I don't think anyone in this room will get that 25 minutes back, quite frankly. The shocking arrogance that just rolls through everything. We're here. All you've done is read a script. You clearly don't want to engage with people. You clearly don't want to back down because you've already made a decision. It, it, you seem to be suggesting that your whole policy has been devised by some you know, team of corporation wombles that have been rummaging through people's bins for the last three years to work out what their usage is. I mean, it's ridiculous. You know, if you were here to genuinely listen to people, then that is not the way to start it. I yeah, guarantee yeah. you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Last week, I sent some photographs into the town hall and asked them to be circulated to all the commissioners. I don't know whether that happened. I didn't even get an acknowledgement. But the photographs were of Mona Terrace Lane. All the owners of Mona Terrace take all their own green waste to the amenity centre, so we don't need any green bins there. But what used to happen when we had weekly collections, occasionally we'd have a little bit of fly tipping. Since it's gone to fortnightly connect collections, it's regular fly tipping, and the state of the lane is dreadful. How are you going to stop all these fly tippers bringing their rubbish to us? So, thank you for your question. Um, We understand that there are concerns regarding individual cases all across the city and that is normal with a big service change like this. We have nearly 12,000 households in Douglas and um, it's not, not going to start perfectly in every location right from the very get-go. Um, in Mona Terrace Lane, I hear that there are some properties that have a, lot, uh, a large garden and um, while not all those properties might uh, use that garden-based collection service, they have the opportunity and maybe they will find it, uh, in time they'll find it that this is an e good service for them, time will tell. Um, regarding the fly tipping, one question would of course be whether those uh, properties are already recycling. If they are not already recycling, um, it would be very good if they contacted the council and um, got the boxes and engaged with the service. Unfortunately, we don't know which property always recycles um, and which one does not. Um, all across the city, we sometimes have a glimpse at properties, um, but with 12,000 properties, we can't monitor, of course, every situation. Um, in those, if you see that there are some areas that have a problem, it would be good if those properties are reported with a uh, report a problem function that can be found on the council's website, um, and then our waste services officer can investigate the issue and see whether this is whether this is a one-time problem, whether it is a reoccurring problem, and if it is a reoccurring problem, our waste services officers can also talk to people in the area. So we can also uh, pro provide fines for fly tipping, however we would do this only in um, very serious cases. Um, foremost we would try to engage with the people living in the area, trying to find solutions for them, um, seeing 
why exactly they struggle uh, with their waste. So it might be that they don't recycle. It might also be something that they don't have enough uh, residual waste capacity. So we will try to get on the bottom of the problem first. And then if, say, it's really a case where no, somebody does not want to recycle and just uh, and just continues to fly tips, then you would probably also go down with a fine route. I can tell you now that the police only react as fly tipping if it's a tipper load, a lorry load. Okay, can we move, move on, please? Apologies, not standing up at the moment. I'm playing football the weekend. I'm keeping my legs. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm here because a number of people phoned me up. Uh, they still do this, but all of us, ex members, to get some advice. And the advice is this they want, they're trying to understand why it is the rates for Douglas were fixed before this decision come out before the decision come out to reduce the service. That's a fact, isn't it? Yes or no? Simple answer. That the rate was set, yes. Is that what happened? That the rate was set. Yeah, you fixed the rate for Douglas before you changed the policy about collecting for a fortnight rather than a week. Yes. You, you've done that, right. Second thing I'm asking it on somebody else or somebody else, Second thing is, if you don't that, what about the, the people who pay rent, which includes rates, 1,500 of them, and then you fix their rents before you fix the rates. Is that correct? Um, we don't have any input. <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, the rates include their waste disposal as well. So they pay for it. You don't give it sorry, free. Excuse me, but your question was about rents. Well, they are, they pay rates and their rent. Yes, but your question related to us fixing their rent yeah. before the rate. So the answer to your question is... No, 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 no. Did, did you fix the rents for the coming year? Yes, I'm trying to answer that question. So we don't fix the rent for social housing. The rent increase is dealt with by the DOI, and it is them who fix the rent ah. for us. Yeah, so you had no say in that? We have no say in right, the so social housing Right, so did you tell them they were going to reduce the services then? There is, I don't feel, and I will, I appreciate, and I'm trying not to come across as arrogant, that I'm trying to provide as much well, information as I we'll can. We'll get down to that later, shall we? The, all right, so the answer is you don't know. No, the answer right. is, I can give you the answer, my next, if you my let next me finish speaking. Is, my next question is this, and it's the last one, on behalf of the people. In, this, in the document, which they've been reading the public, you say that you give it went always to inform them of the change. I'm asking this. I pay my rates in the first week when they come in, always have done. Because the council has it right and needs the money, so you pay it. You're going to pay it any other law. What I'm trying to find out is this. When you send a little letter out, which goes out with the rates, explaining what the corporation does for the rates you pay, why didn't you include a notice in that, saying you were going to reduce the service down to a week, a fortnight rather than a week? Please, please give me an answer to that. So there was a notice in the rates that exactly those service changes would take place. Um, it was sent out with the rates newsletter. And um, with this year's rates, we are also going to include a lot of information material to help people to deal with the service changes and explaining some of the common uh, misconceptions. So rates, we probably get to that at some point anyway, is that um, the waste service changes only make up a certain percentage of the rates demand. So while it is a big part of the rates you pay, it is only a very small part in comparison to all the services that the council provides. And um, while there are going to be some savings of the scheme, um, the, the overall uh, rates that the council uh, has to get are uh, very much impacted by in inflation all across the board. And um, also other things like the public service sector, pay rises and um, the energy from waste plant rises and many other things. Um, so while there might be some savings through the service, all those other pressures
combined will probably more than off offset that saving. I'm going to give you a copy of the Landlord and Tenancy Act, which I hope you read, because that covers all the rates and the rents and charges therein. And the situation is even private landlords can't put fixes against their tenants ahead of what the charges are that they're going to make for that incoming. Yeah. It's there. So you might find yourself in a legal battle. Just give him that, will you? He hasn't got a copy, I'm sure. I, um, I'm not against recycling the slightest. But the level of administration that's took place here is just a disgrace. The consultation here is an absolute abysmal ab abomination even. And you've completely failed to notify any residents. My concern is, and my question is, why were alternative provisions not provided as a matter of course prior to any changes? And no, I didn't get any letter of my taps. No, uh, me, right, please, but. Okay. Um so a change in service doesn't require us to do a consultation and I think it's fair to say that until the problems actually occur we can't anticipate what they are so there are if there are some households some in my area who I've spoken to who are bigger than the average four who are coping just fine and there are others for reasons that we wouldn't know that aren't and it is only until they're brought to our attention that we can deal with it as I have said and obviously um, I haven't articulated myself very well. We have been dealing with flats for many years and trying to ensure that we have enough information so that we could assist them accordingly. Um, I feel, and I have expressed a number of times that we did give information out on your rates bill. There was a leaflet drop. There were a number of adverts in um, the papers. There were radio adverts. I'm not entirely sure I appreciate that if not everybody got the information, we may we could have done it better. But if somebody has some idea of how we could communicate more or better than what we have done, then please let us know because I feel that we really tried in all various different ways to send out the information to do that. Um, I personally, we had um, surgeries for our constituents where we let people know that we were going to be there. I had one of the operatives from the um, way services there that could answer any questions and we had two people turn up neither of which wanted to talk about their way services we can only give as much as we get back as well and we're desperately trying to help people and when people have come to us we are helping them the service has only been running for 10 weeks and when we get into the position that we've helped everybody who has come to us and we will we will help people if they want help we have been helping them and we will help them we can't do more than that Gentlemen in the orange coat there, please. Hi, um, thanks for tuning in tonight. Um, I don't find you arrogant. I just think that some people who come here with a level of hostility and closed minds, and they're always going to describe you as arrogant from speech. I think you've been very flexible about this. I think it's very standard service. And in fact, there's lots of countries that don't collect waste, provide curbside collection. They're Lots of people who have to go, for example, I know from Sweden, they have to go to a central place and themselves and carry all the waste there. Now, I have a household of four, and every two weeks I've just got half to three quarters of the domestic waste bin full. I re recycle everything. I'm very proud of the only, the only The only problem I have is I, I can't recycle all plastics as far as I'm aware. There's certain plastics I'd like to be able to recycle, but I can't. So that, so that'd be my only point. Um, if, it is, if it's possible to improve that. But I think it's doing a great job as much as you can. It's amazing to have a curbside collection service. And people don't appreciate it in other countries. Uh, they don't appreciate it here because they haven't seen it in other countries. And in, and in Sweden, what I, that I'm familiar with, they even charge tax on collecting domestic waste. They're very lucky in that respect as well. They weigh them in and they charge on that. So I think it's, they're doing a great job. And people need to be more open minded at this meeting and listen to you. Um, thank you very much. Just to comment on the plastics, I appreciate what you've said. Um, we are always looking to improve what we can, which is why we now can recycle more plastic than what we did in the past. And as the, as the service is used more, we will look to increase our plastic that we can take in. Thank you. Okay, gentlemen in the blue pull over here, please. <coughs> thank you. Um, I, didn't, uh, I won't call you arrogant either, but I did come across as a bit lecturish. 
um, and all of our all of the problems seem to be our fault. Um, you know, I think the thing I'm taking from this is the change management process um, seems very hit and miss. Um, when you're looking at um, risk management, health and safety, uh, when you're looking at impact analysis, and all your impact analysis seems to be getting done now. You, 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 you change the process and, and, and you've got all these problems that you don't seem to have foreseen. Um, as far as recycling is concerned, we have to put our recycle shoe boxes on the path. That's the only place we've got. We've only got a place for two. We do recycle. I go to the tip all the time. And we probably could cope with one bin, one, one bin collection fortnightly. But you've said yourself, it's the, the, the cartons that we're given are not the ideal solution. In the UK, you get three wheelie bins, you know, which is great. Uh, we, 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 fill them, we fill our cartons up in two days. You know, and so I think a lot of this could have been pre-thought out a little bit better. Yep. Think about that. Um, we did foresee many of the problems, but uh, we cannot really predict how the public will react to all the changes that were uh, going to come forward. Um, there are also we also depend on people coming to us to the council and reporting where the problems are, um, because in some of the cases the council doesn't know exactly what is going on with the particular property. And um, the council also needs permission to uh, install recycling communal bins, for example, also properties. Uh, the management company needs to agree to those changes, so it's quite often, we are quite often depending on uh, management companies communicating with us to be implementing changes at the uh, curb sites. Um, regarding the street, um, what you said regarding the boxes on the street, we are uh, continuously um, monitoring and thinking about possible changes and one of the things that we have um, now made is that we have ordered boxes that have um, a lid with a hinge so that hopefully then will lead to um, for some properties it might be a good solution to avoid wind impacts stuff blowing away but um, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution it might be that the boxes and nets are good for some properties, and the, but the ones with the lids in another property. Sorry, I just want to quickly add to that as well. Um, a lot of the authorities across don't do the, exactly the same as what we do here. They use the boxes we use, they do curbside collection. It is varied throughout. The reason that we don't use the, um, the bins, the co-mingled system, is because we don't have a facility on the Isle of Man where you have to then take it and sort it so that's why our sorting is done on the curbside. I appreciate that the boxes don't suit everybody. Um, I totally get it, which is why, we, we, as Falker said, we continuously look to see what we can do, but we have to remember that they've got to be liftable um, so that the staff who are collecting them are able to pick them up and stand next to the bins, you know, the actual wagons themselves. Mr. Ashford. I mean, we've, we've heard a lot about recycling, and I don't think we're here tonight because people are against recycling. In fact, of all the people who've contacted me, there's only one individual that has actually excused the poor and said recycling is rubbish. But would you actually accept that the reason we're actually here tonight is basically because people are feeling the policy is being done to them rather than having gone on a journey? Instead of the council taking people on a journey with them, they feel that they've sort of been hit over the head and told where the destination's going to be and that you're already there. And in relation to the recycling, I mean, I've been around man's politics long enough to remember when the curbside came in. And the curbside was never designed to be a replacement for the general waste policy. It was designed to complement it, not the other way around. And it's just been said tonight, I want to go back to the opening remarks, that, you know, things can't be anticipated. Well, off the, over, the figures on the opening remark where the uh, waste audit was done, if I noted it down right, it was said that even after recyclers were taken out, there was three out of 10 bins that were still full. Well, the last census has 11,806 households in Douglas. 
So even on those own figures, that's three and a half thousand properties that would have full bins, even with the recyclers taken out. So I, I'm just wanting to know what's being done to try and anticipate that and deal with it now, because the problem is as well, the thing I keep getting fed back to me is people feel it's very big brother, whether it's called a waste audit, a waste assessment, whatever you call it, whether it's rummaging in the garbage or not, people are feeling that they're being told how to live their lives, and that's why people have reacted badly to it. People want, you know, if you're going to do something like this, you need to prepare people for it and give them time to prepare and take them on that journey and engage with them. And again, I think what's made people angry about it is they feel there hasn't been that level of engagement. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Just to correct the whole 10 and a 3 thing, um, what I said was once all the recycling materials and the things that could be either recycled or green waste were taken out of the 10 bins, what was left filled three of the 10 bins. So that, just to correct that, the majority of the bins that were audited were half full when they were collected, was what I said. So I'm hoping that answers your question. Um, I appreciate that people may feel like we've not been taken on a journey. I'm not entirely sure um, how, if I'm on, I can't, I can't undo what we've done is the reality. It was announced in Je no, sorry, can I just finish? What I'm saying is that it was announced in January and information was fed to everybody between January and when the service started in October. No? It did happen. We sent out information. Leaflets were sent out. There were road shows. There was an awful lot of information. The reason why we go to individual properties to help them when they've got issues is because every property has got a different type of issue and we want to make sure that the information we're giving them and the help that we're giving them suits them as a household. You, you know, we're all saying that it's broad strokes and broad brush strokes don't fit everybody. They don't, which is why we're dealing with people on an individual basis. We're not dealing with every co flat complex in the same way. If there is a household with a problem, we're helping them individually. Council members are helping. The officers are helping. We're available to talk to. That's what we're here for. So you don't, I, I, you don't do it. You don't do it. You have an action plan. You don't do it before you help them. You how simple is it? I've um, got to admit, I'm not here as a Douglas resident. I'm here on behalf of one of the management companies. Um, firstly, over the past 12 months, when you say there's been engagement with management companies, um, the dozen properties that I'm dealing with in Douglas have had no engagement at all. Um, we found capacity issues straight away. We've spoken with other management companies and they've encountered the same problems. Problems that we encounter are a lot of the, some of the newer complexes, 20, 30 years old, have been designed with bin storage specifically for weekly collection. Now, you, you say regularly there, oh, we can give you some boxes. There's no capacity. You know, you've got, I'm going to pick Spectrum. Not one of mine, but there's 160 apartments there. Um, you're going to have 400 people living there, all producing. It's built for a weekly collection. And I don't give out boxes and put bricks in them to stop them blowing away promenade. You know, the individual management companies for each block haven't been engaged at all. And when you look at the number of residents that across speaking with other management companies, this must cover 3,000 people that have just not been engaged because the ratepayer may be the owner and not the individual occupier of these blocks and a lot of people have no information. Well, I'm glad, very glad that you came tonight. Um, I would like to ask you to leave your contact details with us so that we can um, find a solution for those properties that you manage. And we would very would like to help all those residents of your properties. 
Regarding the design of the properties, one thing that the council has done now for multiple years is work together with developers of flats to ensure that the, the bin stores that they put in have a sufficient size. Of course, um, this has only been going on for a number of years. Um, so many of the flats that have been built over the last, over the many decades and even sometimes, sometimes centuries ago um, still have uh, problems. However, um, we have solutions for properties like that. So we have communal recycling bins and we can probably, we might also be able to tweak something uh, with the residual waste bins. So sometimes we can, for example, increase capacity by taking out um, a black bin and putting one on obviously more capacity. So for example, the 660 liter bins and the 1,100 liter bins have the same length, so they can be quite easily upgraded. But it very much depends on the layout of your bin store. So we would be our waste services manager would look into your specific locations and try to find a solution for the 12 properties that you manage. Please leave your contact details with us. Uh, the lady here in the front with the uh, grey suit on. Right. Firstly, I would state that I and my immediate neighbours recycle and have done so for quite some time, but are probably more conscious of it now since going on to support nightly collections, but I appreciate that not everyone recycles. However, since this came into being, I have observed the following. Firstly, long tails have been seen in Arbach Lane, and these were certainly not seen prior to the change in waste collection. Secondly, I and my immediate neighbors have all had to call on environmental services regarding mice in our attics. Now, we did report this to the council, and I can't say they were very helpful other than it's nothing to do with us, get on to environmental health. Uh, I have never known this in the six years that we've lived in the property. We have never had a mice infestation. These instances can only be attributed to the fact that there is a more readily food source available in our area. Thirdly, there have been full black bin bags discarded at the end of our street and other areas in close proximity, which attract seagulls and cats resulting in waste being openly spread. This obviously has a knock-on effect upon other departments within the corporation in relation to the collection and disposal of the such waste, and thus, I would imagine, putting additional workload and costs onto other departments. Surely this is false economy. I'd appreciate your comments. Okay, thank you very much. We have been in contact with environmental health over the past few months and they have actually said to us that there have been no increases in what... I can only tell you what we're being told and that's what we're being told. We are communicating with them and that is what they're saying to us. What I would ask is that if you could leave us your details so that we can find out where the, the issue is with regards to fly tipping at the end of your lanes and we'll be able to deal with that accordingly. Uh, a lady at the back corner up by the uh, Santa there, please. Um, I'm just a bit confused. Um, have you actually done an impact assessment before you brought this, these changes into place? Looking at the social, economic, the resource and environment impacts? And if so, where is it published and where can we get a copy of it? Um, and on, the, on, the same, on the same vein, um, you're saying we're 10 weeks in and you're not about to change um, the decision, but what kind of review have you undertaken in the past 10 weeks? And again, where is that that the public that we can see where you've come to the decision and how the review is going? You're, you're constantly saying you're not Where is your evidence? Um, where is it published? So, if there is no long tail infestation, where is your evidence that there is none? You're saying you've helped to environment or where is it in the evidence? You're supposed to be doing an impact assessment or review. You brought quite a big 
change into the weight peers are done with, and you don't see any evidence. Okay, thank you for the comment. Regarding the impact assessment, we have done an internal one, but of course there is also, um, those schemes have been done all over the UK, and there is a charity called RAP, Based on Resource Action Program, which has done intensive studies in this area, far beyond anything that the council could do. Um, and they have analyzed scheme changes in different parts of the UK, and what the common problems were, um, what, co what uh, common um, perceptions on the public were, where, what things should be improved, and what um, and how those changes should be communicated. Um, our strategy has been aligned to that, um, so we have learned from from that, and that has been our one of our original sources. Um, for the review, the second question, um, it's way too early to undertake a review. Um, a review takes considerable resources. Sorry, in 10 weeks then you should be reviewing this every, every so often, you don't wait until the election. The review is very resource intensive and it's costly, so we can't just constantly review. Let's do nothing then, how much is the We then? can't just, we, all the well, different you know, actions that the council are going to take, we don't cons, uh, consistently review every after every couple of weeks. But you're, you're getting complaints, you know our social media campaign is underway. All these people are sitting in here. You should be reviewing. You should have been reviewing this before you came to the meeting tonight. So we have reviewed yeah. we have to review particular elements of the scheme as uh, evidenced by the decision to uh, extend the garden waste collections. So that has been extended for one month. We have reviewed other elements um, re for example the the collection boxes. We have now ordered the collection boxes with bins. We have uh, reviewed other things, um, for example, how to communicate and so on. So there are always things that we're trying to incrementally improve. Um, however, the service as a, as a whole is way too early to be reviewed. Yes, uh, cons after screening everything for confidential information and so on, whether there any GDPR issues and so on, what, uh, what is left of that we can, of course, publicize. Okay, uh, Mrs. Christian, next, please. Um, so I have some quite a lot of questions, so I apologize. Um, You've advised of your communication campaign prior to the service changing. What have you done since the service change started to advise people of how you can help them? My next question is, why didn't you actively identify the apartment blocks in the areas that were going to have problems before? Why did you not act actively do this before the scheme started? Since the scheme has started, how many additional, and you may not have this information, but I would hope that you'll supply it. Since the scheme started, how many additional black bins have you supplied? How many are still waiting for supply? What is the current lead time? Have you refused any black bins? What has the additional cost been to the council? Do you regret not doing a consultation? That is really, really key. I would like to ask you, councillor, councillors, what will it take for you to revert this decision? Is it not best to revert the decision, do a consultation, find out the facts, go to these apartment blocks, help them, help the individuals that are here tonight, and then, possibly then, reinstate it? Thank you. I think it's fair to say it doesn't really matter what I say now, so I'll do the best I can. Um, we have had 124 requests for assistance 
78 of which um, we have conducted. Um, I don't have the percentage of how many of them um, we I think, I haven't got the actual number in relation to how many people we gave extra burns, but it was a very small number. Uh, it was in the it was below five definitely of how many people we actually gave extra capacity to. Um, I don't have more details than that, but I'm fairly sure at some point in the future we can share this. Um, if everybody's willing to come with us and help, we won't need to reinstate a, a weekly collection. The vast majority, I've been around my own estate when it was our collections, and one out of the area that I drove around had a side, a side waste. Everybody else was coping fine and they were able to put the recycling out, which means the vast majority of people within Douglas are coping and it's working. Yeah, it means you live in a middle class area with lots of dry space and garden space. That's what I mean. Yeah, just because there's no waste that will die, it doesn't mean the same people aren't coping. They could be keeping other waste inside their property. Yeah. Yeah. So, those fortnightly refuse collection schemes, which are part of the overall waste uh, changes for Douglas, um, are never popular when they are introduced. It depends, like all, all across the UK, people are initially against it. However, if we look on the, what actually happens after um, a number of years, when people are used to the scheme, even after a couple of months in many cases, um, people are changing their habits they are going, getting nudged into the right direction. And once new habits are formed, those schemes are, are re resulting in the right uh, behavior changes and are providing the numbers. For many, many years, the council has tried to raise recycling rates through educating people, communicating, and doing all those things that everybody would like to see. However, it was just so easy for the majority of residents to throw everything in the black bin. Um, and even though the council has tried for many years to make recycling as easy as possible, as long as it's just, this out, just so easy to throw everything in the black bin, some people unfortunately can never be reached and con uh, convinced to recycle. Um, so we had to bring the, those two a bit closer together and uh, nudge people to uh, do the right thing. Um, it has been it has been intensively studied in the UK what impacts a local authority can make um, by changing uh, the waste uh, waste provision in their local authority, and um, those changes that we have made are exactly the ones the biggest influencers that a recycling uh, local authority can make. It is about introducing a garden waste collection and reducing the capacity for black bins. Sorry, just to go back, we don't have the answers to all your questions uh, to hand. So if you want to email them to me, I'll happily respond to them. How long does it take for a bin, flat bin on order now? On average, two weeks. On average, two weeks. If, you've been, if you have had a visit from one of... Sorry, say that again. If between now and Christmas, if you order one now, you won't be able to get a black As for every Christmas, we are aware that there, are, there is extra... And ways How that is, is that being prepared? For that is being prepared for by the same way that we do every year, where people, if they put sideways on, we will happily collect it over Christmas. We do it every year, we make ourselves available. The um, operatives are working throughout Christmas, your bin will be collected in the same way as it is now, in the day that it's collected throughout Christmas, it won't change. And if you happen to have extra waste that, that is on the side, we will take that. And that is how we will be dealing with Christmas in the same way as we've dealt with it every year. Hello, good evening, everybody. Um, I would like to ask the panel um, two questions. Can I make a, a preliminary observation? It seems to me that there is a there is a palpable democratic um, deficit uh, which is coming across in terms of the feeling and emotion expressed this evening. And I think we need to ground future action 
and based on the mandate of the Douglas Council, which is, after all, um, a democratically appointed body. And it seems to me um, that, uh, well, I have two questions. First, based on those observations, um, what, was the, what was the democratic mandate by reference to specific manifesto pledges in council member manifestos which led to this decision being taken. And in the same vein, given the strength of feeling in this room, will the chair ask for a show of hands as to whether or not the people here assembled support the decision or indeed a wish to have it reversed? Because I think we need to put the focus back on the people that have voted the council members in and note the considerable dissatisfaction expressed in this room. Thank you. I, for one, have added in my manifesto saying that I would uh, propose that uh, switch to fortnightly collections, and I was voted in. Um, I don't know exactly what every other councillor had in the manifestos, but we are living in a representative democracy, not in a direct democracy. And as a representative democracy, we have to, the representatives, the elected bodies, have to have more access to information and um, are elected to act on the constituents' behalf to make the best decisions that so they deem right. So the people are not consulted on every decision, on things like, for example, tax rises and so on. There might be very different opinions in the room to what sometimes politicians have to do. And that is all across the spectrum. Margaret Thatcher, as a very prominent example, uh, has put in horrendous decisions, but she was uh, elected to do things. Of course, we are nothing like Margaret Thatcher, and our <laughs> society is much more civil. But just showing to you, it is very much within the legal remit. Um, and we are trying to do the right thing here. We are not elected to do exactly what the whole body Douglas wants at every any given moment, but we are trying to do what is right for the city of Douglas. Gentleman over there on the ramp in the black coat. Given what you've heard tonight from everybody here, and the photographs you've seen on social media, it is quite clear that Douglas is currently dirty. Does Douglas Council feel, or is it satisfied, that it is fulfilling its duty under the Public Health Act 1990 regarding the collection of waste? And does Douglas Council consider that it could be at risk of having the function transferred to another authority or the Department of Infrastructure, as listed under Section 5 of the Local Authority Act 1985, a failure to carry out that function. Um, I don't believe that we are not filling up, fulfilling our function. I think we are. We're just doing it in a different way to what it was done before. And I would like to emphasise that we are not the only parish on the Isle of Man who do bi-weekly collections. We are the only parish on the Isle of Man who provide a comprehensive recycling service of over and above what you get on your bi-weekly Douglas collection. Is dirty. Do, I, I'm afraid... Yes. Um, I don't believe Douglas is dirty. I believe that our operatives do an amazing job and they do empty the bins and they do pick up where necessary. Uh, gentlemen in the middle of the, the back row, right at the back there, please. Yeah, with the blue jump on. Yeah. No, no, uh, sorry, I meant, oh, sorry, this gentleman will be right at the back, sorry. Oh, yeah. I'll come, I'll try and get round to everybody in due course. Holding. Um, you have. Sorry. Can't hear you. Right. Castle Holding. 
you um, went to a council meeting on the 9th, on the 9th of February, uh, attended by Councillor Phillips, and uh, this was to look at um, the online consultation for people to understand what what went on at that online consultation. But unfortunately, you banned those uh, uh, minutes in the in the meeting. They're on your website and you won't publish them. What have you got to hide from that? Thank you for the question. I think if I understand you correctly, it is regarding the uh, consultation that was uh, sent out to people in Douglas many months ago and asked them about uh, their views on waste and recycling issues in Douglas. Um, that consultation um, had names and GDPR uh, things in it and um, it can't be published. Um, however, um, the council is going to uh, review its, uh, it's going to change its uh, way it undertakes uh, those surveys and in the future those results will be published on future consultations. Um, as a general uh, policy, the council does not uh, publicize all the consultation uh, results, um, survey results. Um, it was a survey rather than much more than a consultation. Um, and this is not a common habit. So we are going to look into it in the future and improve on that, but we can't do it right to it reactively. And if you, if that policy had been um, very good from your point of view, the town crier would be out with his bell telling everybody about it. You covered that up. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I just need clarification. I don't understand what you mean by minutes are not minutes to what exactly? Sorry. On your, on your website, on the council meeting of the 9th of February, Councillor Pips asked the questions about the online survey carried out by the public and I know a number of people filled those out and they were heavily weighted towards what you wanted them to be uh, and only where you could put in uh, at the bottom of the notes uh, issues that you really were concerned about that didn't weight it towards yes, yes, yes and we want the council to do this and we want the yes vote and then it turns out on the 9th of February asked by Councillor Pips, um, can, we ca can, you sh can you publish the outcome of that online survey? And Paul Corning was down and saying, no, I'm not going to publish it. Why okay, can't so, we publish it? So the reason that they can't, it can't be published is because it had personal information on that was... Why not, why not? Well, so, that, so we started an attitude survey in relation to what people thought results. about it. So what, we will, so what we will do when we do our next survey is we will have the questions in a way that they will be, we will be able to publish them so that they don't provide per people's personal information and that is the reason why we didn't publish them. We could redact that, we could redact that and basically you would have an impact assessment done by them. Yeah, if okay, you do it, thank you very much. We'll take on board what you've said and we'll have a look and see if there is an option for us to redact the information and provide that. Have you got a pen? <laughs> Councillor Wells, Councillor Horning. Um, I'm not adverse to recycling. We do it in our household. However, um, this was mentioned in 2018 in the council. And I clearly remember Mr. Christian standing by me and saying, by all means, bring this forward. But let's see who's brave enough to put it on their manifesto. Nobody saw anything coming forward before then. And nobody saw anything coming forward until the rates came out. What you did say before was um, that 90% of households have four or fewer. That may well change because a lot of the young adults cannot afford to move away from home. In fact, they're moving back in with the parents because they can't get on the ladder and they can't rent. So those statistics, albeit while they're perhaps okay now, they may not be in another 12 months. You said before that we manage our own rubbish. Um, so I'd like to ask you, in respect of the 25,000 
say, savings that you said is not true. Can you give us a figure of what the saving is? Okay, so with regards to £25,000, what I was saying is that it was um, wrongly put out in the media that the reason for us to um, to go to Fortnite Collections was to save £25,000. That, that was never the idea in the first place. They have been savings, which are always taken into consideration when we do our rates. So anything that we've saved in relation to our green waste collection. So just to, um, to try and clarify in relation to that, anything that we take to, and I'm gonna just pick a figure because it's easier to, to, to um, articulate in this way. If we take something to the energy from waste plant, it costs us, um, 100 pounds per ton of waste that we take there anything we take out of that we wouldn't have to pay for it to go to the energy from waste plant with regards to our green waste it costs us half of that if we take that out of that energy stream and we recycle it that is a big saving to the whole of douglas and anything that we have saved from that then goes back into um our calculations when we do the rate at the end of the year any savings that we can make now bear in mind that we year on year and ever since i've been a council member we have been cutting down cutting down on everything that we can we're at the absolute bare bones of what we do now so we we have a lot of costs that come in that are beyond our control energy from waste is one of them and we have to try and make sure that everything that we can do is done to save the douglas ratepayer but anything that we do is far outweighed by the costs that are put on us that we have no control over so it doesn't really matter if I say it's £25,000 or £80,000. The re reality of both of those figures is that they are already built into the budget and they are a very small percentage of the increase. So if the increase last year was 3.7%, if we hadn't made a change to the system, it would have been 5%. But we're doing our best to ensure that when the rate increases come out, they are really are at the lowest level that we can make them in order for us to continue the service that we provide. Would you agree though with your £25,000 that you've given us a nominal figure that that rates have already been paid so we as ratepayers should know the actual true figure and not only that you're looking at um, one, of, one of the mission statements said to question and challenge and help and secure value for money in the provision of council services. We've always said in the council that we should not reduce the rates and reduce services. And we shouldn't reduce services to reduce the rates. However, we're not reducing the service, we are reducing the services, sorry, here. Um, but if the recycling takes off and reaches 50%, so at the, mo at the moment you said it was static, then it went from, from 5% to 15%. What exactly does that mean? Where, where's the 5 and 15%? Is it volume? Is it property? And, and what time scale is this that the recycling sort of grows? What I would say is with the recycling, if it gets to the 50% level, which is what I presume that you want, you're looking for a greener, cleaner Douglas, is the pollution not coming from our cars going down to the civic amenity site? Is it going to do? What about the, um, what about the res residual the rubbish that you said um, isn't outside the bins? The civic community site's been closed for a few days because their bins are, or their skips have been too full. Is that the reason why? And if so, if it's closed, then you're having to take that bin wagon up to the energy from waste plant. Am I correct? So there were quite a number of questions there. I had tried to address them one by one. Um, <clears throat> regarding the waste figures, those were by weight rather than by volume um, and of course many of the materials that we take out for the recycling are take quite a lot of volume so for example the plastics um, the cardboard and cans they don't weigh very much but they take a lot of space in the bin so when people can recycle them they have a lot of additional capacity in their back bin uh, regarding the eastern civic community site the Waste was uh, closed because of the weather in the last days. Uh, there was a lot of ice on the roads and uh, for the health and safety of the residents and indeed the operators, we had to close the site. Regarding emissions, well, there is a very wide picture here um, on all kinds of things. So there is the emissions that residents create um, driving their 
residual waste to the civic community site if they choose not to recycle and don't have any other means. However, those are hopefully quite a few going forward and um, getting fewer every month, hopefully. Um, there is, on the other hand, the saving of um, people not having to go to the civic community site anymore to dispose of their garden waste. So those are going to be on the other side of the coin. And then we also have all kinds of other emissions to consider. So when materials are being produced, um, they create emissions. Um, if you want to produce paper, you have to cut down trees. If you want to um, create cans, you have to mine minerals, and those are creating huge emissions. Um, so if you can, for example, recycle one aluminum can, you save about 90% of the energy, and just the recycling of one aluminum can can run your television for about four hours. Um, there are also many pollu there's pollution with water and seas to consider when um, creating virgin materials. And then also, when we come to the incinerator, I'm quite actually surprised that this hasn't been brought up too much today, but um, all the stuff that goes into the black bins doesn't just uh, vanish into thin air. There is bottom ash produced in considerable amount by that stuff that goes into the incinerator. It's about 20% of the weight that goes into the incinerator comes out of bottom ash. 3% comes additionally out as fly ash. Um, and a lot of gas oil is also used to run the incinerator. So it's not as environmentally friendly as a solution as some people might have in their mind. Um, it produces 7% of the power uh, on the island, but about 25% of the emissions for power production. So having the incinerator as an ideal solution is, is really very, very far from the truth when it comes to the environment. Gentlemen, gentlemen at the back on the side, they've been waiting some time with the glasses. That's it. Yep. yep. Thank you. It's a question for Councillor Wells. She said earlier that there's no health impact. Uh, we have a backyard that's six metres by three metres. Half of that's taken up by a sitting space that I've got. So we have a dustbin sat a couple of feet away from us. We can't go out into the back lane because you give letters out saying you're going to get fined if the bin goes out in the back lane apart from on bin day. So I can't use my bins, I can't use my backyard now because the bin is sat a couple of feet away from me for two weeks. So that means I have no outdoor space for summer. So it's all right if you've got a garden and you've got a big driveway, but a lot of us in central Douglas don't have that. We just have, a, we just have a little concrete yard. So what do you expect us to do? We recycle everything we can, and yet we don't have green waste because we don't have a garden. So you basically cut our service by 50%. You put green waste up in to people who can use it. We can't use it. So we're getting less of a service every time. So, sorry, I just want to clarify. You're saying you, because you can't now put your bin in your back lane, and it's in your back, no. sorry, I'm, I'm not understanding what you're saying because your black, your black bin is now in, the, in your back garden because you're concerned well, about it. It's been in the backyard a long time. Okay. But well, it used to get emptied once a week. Yeah. So after a couple of days, it starts stinking in summer and we've got flies hovering around everywhere. We're not going to be able to sit out in the back garden, are we? Because it'll be stinking. You've got a garden probably, haven't you? Have you got a garden? I do have a garden. Yeah, so you're all right then, aren't you? Those of us in central Douglas don't have that. So you, but you've never ever questioned that, have you? You never asked, are you managing in central Douglas when you've got a little concrete backyard? We can't put the bins anywhere so you have to sit outside and be stinking. I'm exactly right, the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I would suggest that if everything that is being recycled is being recycled and the bin lid is shut, then it shouldn't cause you an awful lot of issue. The, the bin lid is properly closed, there should not be any odors coming out. If you are, however, con very much concerned about this topic, you can double bag your bins, uh, your waste, and then it should be even better. Than that. If you really consider that small amount of plastic to be an issue in contrast to the big amounts of waste uh, that is averted by recycling materials and all the emissions, 
then uh, that's a very false economy. Stop preaching, start listening, eh? Yeah. You, don't, you don't just choose to live, you have to follow certain rules of society. Don't you? Don't you? Don't you? If you don't have a garden and that's your only outdoor space, that's up to you where you want to sit, isn't it? You don't want to sit next to a bin, you don't have to. Well, hello, everybody. Same position as you, I'm perfectly happy. We're having a conversation between each other here. I'll wait to open the finish. Anyhow, uh, from what I've taken so far from this meeting, is it's our fault for not doing as we're told. And if, it, if only we would do better. So that's the start of what I see. But it is our fault. It is our fault because we allowed these councillors to do this. Some of them have been elected or go on the council unelected, unopposed, that have walked in and they voted for this big change. It's a massive change, despite what we are told from our friends over who make up to speak Sweden. But what I wanted to say is, this to me highlights a problem we've got. Lower Douglas and Flatland, Lower Douglas mainly built for the Victorian tourist trade. And uh, some of us still live in that area. I do, certainly in the main road. We have got the smallest front garden. We've got the smallest yard at the back. We've got three bins because the, the, all the houses are not unique. They've been repurposed to uh, apartments. And consequently, we've no, we have simply no space for re do re do recycling bins in the front, which is very small, and we've no space at the back. Now, I did take the offer up from the council. I got somebody to come around. Now, you know what I was told? If we, get, if we only get some pallets and build a little cage, we could stack a few more up in the front garden. We do try our best with our front garden. I'm quite proud of it. Uh, it's a nice a few flowers and roses, but if we have more pallets in it, it'll look blinking awful. So I would do what you want to do if only I had more space. Now I want to finish on this just to show a flavour of how the council think about waste and litter. Now, some of you may have noticed around the town that litter bins are disappearing. Now, you could be forgiven. Have the litter bins been tick kicked over? No. Have they been set afire? No. What's happened is people have used them and they've took them away because they've been used too much. I did say to Andrew over there, well, Andrew, couldn't you get them to empty the bins, these litter bins, a bit more often? And he said, no, people are abusing it by filling them up. Now, that's what we're up against. Now, I do say, if you're not prepared to listen, councillors, we've only got one option, and that is, the next time around, we have to vote you out. We hope we get people who come in and try and work with the ratepayer who pays the bills for the rates to be emptied and try and come up with a solution, because no, none of us really want to uh, not do our bit but we want to do it in a, in a, in a well-managed way that suits our own circumstances. So that's all I've got to say, and thank you for listening. Yeah. No, you've had a go, sir, at the back, I'm afraid. Anybody else? I'm going to take one more question. The gentleman at the front here hasn't asked a question yet. Could I, could I just ask, I'll speak in a louder voice because there's no microphone. Um, I think the point that has come across to me tonight is that the communication from the council has been appalling on this matter and we hope that it will improve in the future. I talk about the near future. We're about to face Christmas and New Year which both come within a 14 day period. If the current rate of filling bins is at over 50%, that means, according to my calculation, that on the second collection into the new year, every bin will be at capacity or worse. Is the council going to communicate with people, for a change, as to what the proposals are to cover the imminent two-week period? Or are we going to face side waste all over the place? 
So I think I answered the question in relation to Christmas um, collections earlier yeah, on. Sorry, but the, the, the point is that I'm saying, where is the communication? So yes, what the answer to your question is yes, we will communicate what we're going to do in relation to Christmas. It is no different to any other year where we... No, no, where we I'm sorry, it is different because we're now on a two-weekly cycle. As in, we will, as we do every Christmas, we will accept side waste, which we do every Christmas. Your, the bin collections are on the same day over the two-week period as they were before, and if there is side waste during the period over Christmas and New Year, we will take that. And yes, we will communicate that more um, as the weeks come in front of us. Can I also just ask a small follow-up? If we all do more recycling using the boxes and we ask for additional boxes, what provision are you going to make to keep the pavements clear? Because it seems to me, if you look at London, for example, the blight of London at the moment is the number of wheelie bins left on pavements. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we really yeah. want Douglas to look like that? Is the collection of rubbish our sole concern, or are we not proud of the place we live in, architecturally, visually, as an open space? I think that we are being told tonight that rubbish is the only thing of concern, and I think most people here find that thoroughly depressing. I hope that we all share um, a common love in our, in our island, in our city here, so we are trying to keep it as lovely as it is. Um, regarding the number of bins on pavements, um, those black bins only are only going to be set out now every two weeks in many areas, so hopefully you will even get fewer bins to see on the number of uh, fewer occasions you will see those bins. Yes, there might be more bins than the collection day is, but it's only half as often. And in some areas it might even entice people to take in their bins more often now that the collection is every, only every two weeks. Unfortunately, even before the service changes have been implemented, um, there were many areas in Douglas that uh, struggled with the number of bins left in back lanes. And while the council does its utmost to, um, to look after those areas and to try to convince people to take them in and can find people who leave their bins on the pavement, um, it can't look at every area at once and the service change hopefully entices people more to take their bins back in. No, so I'm sorry, I think that uh, we're going around in circles can, a little bit. No. Can, I, can, I, can I just make one point, please? Um, I am going to the immunity site myself every other week. I consider myself to be a good recycler. I haven't recycled any more or less since the new policy, but I'm going to the immunity site. I'm not the only person here doing that. I'd like the council to accept that our many of us are having to go to the immunity site and that your numbers don't always stack up, please. I wonder why it, it's a problem for me. So I called my daughter, who lives in the UK, and she's, worked, she's lived in two areas in the UK since she moved there. I thought about the recycling that they have in the UK, and the big difference is it's food waste. They have good recycling, all right, they recycle it in the UK, but every week the food is collected, and I believe it's a legal requirement for food waste to be collected every week. I'm not asking you to give us bins for our food waste. We have enough bins. What I'd like you to do is to collect our food waste every week so that we don't have public health issues. And by doing that, you need to collect from the black bins every week to allow us to put our food waste in those bins. If you don't do that, then the UK is uh, at a higher standard than the people of Douglas. We're going to be a dirtier town, a dirtier city than all of those in the UK because you're not collecting our food waste every week. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, I will say that there is no legal requirement um, in the UK for collecting of food waste um, and there's actually only half of the English authorities who run a fortnightly refuse collection who offer food waste services. I do hear what you're saying though and it is something that I'm sure we can consider in the future if it is viable for us as an authority to do so. 
Okay, no, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I think that we the, we have sort of gone in very thoroughly into the subject. Excuse me, let me please. If you count the number of people here and the number of people who live in Douglas, is a show of hands going to prove anything? It's a very small percentage of the population. But if you want a show of hands, uh, how many people? How many people in the room are in favour uh, of the fortnightly bin collection? Here's your votes at the next election. Okay. How many work for the council of those who've got their hands up? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. They may still be raising their hands. Also, the conditions for the next election. They may still be raising their hands. Please, ladies and gentlemen, let's just conduct this meeting with a bit of decorum, all right? How many people would prefer uh, that the bin collection went back to weekly? Well, I think that's fairly conclusive. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to thank, thank everybody for coming here tonight and uh, for listening and for voicing your views. And I'd like to thank Councillor Wells and Councillor Ford. Uh, we've been under a bit of a barrage of fire this evening.